right, real quick. This is a quick episode. Should be a quick episode of questions and answers. Real quick, I wanted to answer uh, Miss April question. Um, she commented on my cousin's, um, my six year old, um, my Keytron six year old cousin gets hit by a train video, and she uh, commented heartbreaking story. Um, R.I.P. Jackie. When are you going live? Um, I don't know really. I gotta find. I gotta think of some things we can talk about when I go live, or um, maybe have a Q and A or something like that. And um, we'll we'll um we'll, we'll see what we can do. Maybe I don't know. Probably today. Probably tomorrow. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? Just uh, I gotta figure it out. What what are we gonna talk about? Then um, I don't know. That's basically it. And also. I want to address the comments that I be reading. Some of y'all may know that um, I be misspelling words, and I don't even be uh, finishing the whole sentence. And some of the some of the comments that I be reading, that's because I read with roaming eyes. I don't know if y'all like understand when I'm reading. Like for some reason, my eyes got a habit of when I'm reading like one line, I'm already three, four lines. Um, I'm trying to like. Like, I don't know, I'm trying to like, while I'm already, I'm trying to multitask basically while I'm reading because when I'm reading to y'all, uh, I don't practice the, I don't rehearse it first. It's, um, it's live, like we freestyling, like when I'm reading, I'm freestyling to y'all. It's a difference when you're reading something to yourself or when you know you're not being recorded and you're reading something, you know what I'm saying? So if you're reading comments and you know you're recording a video that makes you mess up sometimes you know what i'm saying and we all do it sometimes you know even the best readers in the world they you know they mess up so i just want to apologize for that i'm not perfect when when i'm reading these comments those are raw i haven't not rehearsed none of those comments and i do have roaming eyes when i'm reading so that means that i might read i'm already while i'm reading uh one sentence my eyes are like four or five rows down the line, you know what I'm saying? It's like I could a photographic memory where I look at the sentence and try to photographically remember it while I'm already reading three, four lines. So that that's how I rehearse it, but it's all captured live. So that makes me stutter, stumble, and not even finish sentences. Half of the some names I can't pronounce. But it's funny, y'all, because when I upload these damn videos and I go back and watch it, I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like um, when I read the the last uh, comments, uh, reading comments five, well, I couldn't even pronounce uh, bandaged. But the moment I uploaded the video, I'm like, oh, shit, that's bandages. You know, he mean bandages up. But it's just when I'm reading it at the time, I'm already three, four, five lines. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, to answer that question, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll figure something out. Um And I just wanted to use your comment to address that because I didn't want to take a screenshot of a black screen or nothing like that. But uh, we'll see. You know what I'm saying? We'll basically see uh, what we're going to talk about. I got to, you know, if y'all shoot me some questions, if y'all want me to go live, but you like you you and a few other people uh, looking forward for me going live. So I don't know what's y'all schedule. You know what I'm saying? What time y'all will be available. So I don't know. We'll, you know what? Here's what we'll do. We'll probably test out the first live uh, tonight at 7 o'clock. We're going to see how things go. So if I remember, we will go. I'll go live tonight at 7 o'clock, and we'll see how that live go. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah, so we'll address that. And uh, But, yeah, that, then another thing. It really is a heartbreaking story about my little cousin, uh, cause like I felt that hunt me still to this day, and that happened a long time ago, man. You feel me? But when you a kid and you looking at your cousin, because I'm gonna tell you why I hurt so much, right? Here, here's what you need to understand. As kids, we have like a monkey see, monkey do type brain. Anything we see other people do, we want to do it. And we believe, our, when we are kids, our belief is stronger than ever. When we start getting grown, we start losing belief. We don't believe a lot of half the shit we believe when we kids. You get what I'm saying? So in other words, when you're a child, your mother and your daddy can be just like the cartoons you're watching. They can be your superheroes, right? And 
or your favorite TV sh- uh, cartoon show could be your favorite hero. You try to imitate that shit in real life. You know, like you probably jump off the roof and think you could fly if you seen somebody fly as you if you was a child. You get what I'm saying? So your belief is everything. So when you a child and you watching your cousin uh, dying or hurt really bad and you, you know, you the superhero, you trying to save him or her. And then somebody pull guns and, you know, make you uh, put them down, like scare the hell out of you. Um, And at that time, I don't remember seeing any white people at all, any white people. So you got to think about that. Uh, from birth till about nine, ten years old, I never seen a white person in my life. It was always black. It was heavenly black. And at that time, you know, we don't, we didn't have to, we didn't even, we didn't have to worry about uh, black people working for somebody, like a government or somebody trying to kill you, set you up. You know what I'm saying? Just, you know, in it for their own pleasure, own benefits, whatever. I don't really give a fuck about it. It was all love, for real, for real. You feel me? Either you hate me or you love me. You know what I'm saying? You fuck with me or you don't. In At a young age, everybody knew everybody. You feel me? It was all love. Yes, it's a hood, so you're going to get fights and all that shit every now and then. But for the most part, it's good for you. You feel me? And so that's how we grew up. I ain't never seen no white person ever at that time. And then I know a bunch of white people show up with guns and shit. Time I put my cousin down, who I was born in this world with who I've been through the struggle with, who I know for a fact, who is my mother only sister child. My mama only had one sister, you know? And they that's my those are my first cousins. You know what I'm saying? My mama's sister had five kids. My mama had four. You know what I'm saying? Together was nine of us. It, you know what I'm saying? That's my little cousin, so I'm trying to save her. You feel me? I'm trying to be the superhero. But that shit hunted me for a long time and it still do because I kept saying, cause my cousins always came and got me every morning. Cause I'm the oldest. You feel me? I was the oldest out of them. They came and got me every fucking morning so we can go to school together every morning. We always walk to school together. That one time they did not come and get me for school. My little cousin was laid out there dead. I never forget that moment, man. Never. And I'm going to tell y'all what hunt me too, what what made us hit me so hard. Because I don't know if y'all remember this song, right? But it was a song that came out. uh, I get so weak in the knees. I can hardly speak. I lose the control and something takes over me. That song, I remember hearing that song. Right around the time my little cousin was dead, I was like, what the fuck? And that song, like, I ain't hate it or nothing, but it's a good song. But every time I hear that song, I get so weak. Um, I think about my cousin because that's, that's the song that I heard um, running to run into my own. Um, to my house, to my apartment, crying, telling everybody Jackie got hit. And even when I was picking her up off the ground, walking with her, people was riding by playing that song. I get so weak in the knees. I can hardly speak. Every time I hear that song, I'm like, damn, I, like it brings back memories. And it, it's not memories that hurts me or shit like that. It just, the only hurting part about it is that I wish I could have saved her. You feel me? And she was still talking to me, but here's something to consider, right? I, I want you to really think about this. We don't understand in the United States of America, how many murders that hospitals get away with. I'm saying I believe it was the hospital that murdered both my auntie and my little cousin. Yeah, everybody play a part in it, but you got to look at this. We live in the United States of America, man. This is the South. The South was the most racist place on earth. It was very racist. It's a grimy motherfucking place. You can never imagine growing up in the South. You feel me? When we see the people from the North running off at the mouth at the police like how they do, we like, damn. Because you ain't finna do that down in the South. It's a difference. You feel me? Uh, We come from slave states. Half of our families was really slaves. (laughs) For real. That shit matters. It affects you, right? So with that being said... 
slaves, racist people has always been free to travel wherever the fuck they want, however they wanted to. Blacks, we were not allowed to travel at all. We wasn't allowed to do nothing, really, but be slaves. So you have to take into consideration when when these white Americans that was racist, well, they was never slaves. They was always free. The only people that was the original slaves was white women. <clears throat> they were the original slaves before the blacks got here. They was number one. They experienced slavery long before black Americans ever knew what it was because they were married to the serial killers and a lot of them was coming up dead. You know, the white woman was almost extinct in the United States of America by the wrong husbands and shit. It, it was bad, man. These people are real demons, I'm telling you. And so I don't mean to go off topic, but and so I'm it's it's gonna make sense. Pay attention. And so when white people go apply for a job, ain't no fucking when you fill out an application in the United States of America, and I'm quite sure everybody in the United States of America could testify to this. And you can't lie, you, you know, you already know. There is no questions that ask, are you racist? And no damn application where you're going to apply for any job. It asks you, are you black, white, or Hispanic? Just like when you call the police on somebody. If you say it's a black man, they're going to take their time and come there. Hopefully he did when they get there. I don't give a fuck about no nigga. Excuse my language, y'all. But if it's a white person, phew, they there in a minute. You feel me? Hurry up. They white. You feel me? You make a phone call, say somebody need help. And, you know, it's a black person. Oh, they taking their time. It's a Hispanic person. Oh, they taking their time. Any other race. You say it's white, they coming. You feel me? They on their way fast. So with that being said, uh, if you racist, you can get a job anywhere in America as long as you fuck you white. It don't matter. <laughs> and so back then, it's, it is the truth, though. As America changed, the KKK took off the robes. This, this is facts. And they got jobs in the police stations. They, they were smart about it. They got jobs in all the places you would need to take your black ass to. You need your mail. They work in there. You need to go to the hospital. They work in there. You need to go to the police station, uh, file a police report, whatever. They work in there. You need the news to be delivered. They work in there. You know what I'm saying? Just to look at the comments I was reading the other day about my little cousin, um, about the same matter of fact, the same topic right now where you're looking at Keytron's six-year-old cousin gets hit by a train. Go back and watch that video, even though it's not perfect, y'all. My reading is, you know, like I said, I read with Roman eyes. Uh, but anyway, go back and watch that video. You'll notice some of the script, some of the um news uh, articles I was reading, they was racist. Like the one that said, little Jackie decides to kill herself. You can tell the person who wrote that was racist. I felt the racism in that while I was reading that shit. It made me feel some type of way. You feel me? I'm like, damn. Nah, I pay attention to it. This this sound racist as fuck. You know, little Jackie. That shit, they, they, that's the words they used back in the days to black people, you know. But anyway, uh, moving forward, you'll notice racism is everywhere in the United States, man. Every fucking where. It's no joke. Blacks couldn't travel at all. White people could travel any motherfucking way they wanted to. They had all the money and they was racist. So, of course, the world going to be racist towards us because they they was buying friends. And if you buy the right friends, you get around them, your way is going to rub off on them if you a follower, not a leader. So at that time, America tells on themselves all the time what they say. We're the most powerful country in the world. We're the most... Uh, this and that, the richest, most powerful country in the world. Okay, so if the richest, most powerful country in the world is also the most feared country in the world from dropping bombs and always at war, they have a racist core. So when these people start traveling around the world, all these other countries going to be scared as hell because they know they're the most powerful country in the world. So now you got these racist ass homeboys with a whole lot of money and killing and just, you know, and but they don't like a certain race. So now you're going to adapt with them. You're going to be racist if you're not a follower. That's like if somebody send you some friends and you're not strong enough and 
they use these in undercover cult missions. That's how they turn you to a crackhead, a drug head, a slut, a prostitute, a raper, a murderer, whatever. They send you some whole friends if you're a female and these whole friends sucking dick and getting fucked. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to suck dick and you're going to get fucked. Excuse my language. Because that's that's who you surrounded with. Uh, if you uh, a person, they surround you with a bunch of shooters. You know, every day they going out shooting, whatever. You're going to be a shooter. Now, if you if you a leader or whatever, you would resist that to the till you die. They're gonna keep coming at you, but you can keep resisting that. But it's only few people that's like that. You feel what I'm saying? So I say that to say this. At that time, uh I believe that, you know, it was just my cousin Luck that at that time she ran into some racist, low key racist people in the hospital that could have saved her life. But fuck it, she a nigga. Gives a fuck, you feel me? Go ahead on and pull the plug. Yeah, the train started, but the hospital finished it. And it's just like that today in America. Some people get fucked up in the street. They get pronounced dead in the hospital. Like in Miami, let me see. What's this hospital name? Um, uh, It's a hospital in Miami. Uh, Rider Trauma Center. It ends with Rider Trauma Center. I forgot. I think it's called... Uh, Jackson's Rider Trauma Center, that hospital got a 98% murder rate, in my opinion. If you, they have more murders, more people die in that fucking hospital than any hospital in the United States of America. You could bet your fucking ass on that. You could bet your ass on that. That, like, for instance, and that's in Miami. Once you cross the border into Broward County, for instance, Hollywood Memorial Hospital, yes, a few people died there, and I stopped liking it there too since a lot, you know, since the government changed, different government running it. But back in the days, that was my favorite fucking hospital, period. That hospital success rate is so motherfucker. Nigga, they probably, they probably had maybe two people die in that hospital in like five years. I'm serious. I mean, 10 years of since I know that hospital is great. They had some of the best people in the world, in my opinion, because I've been there so many times. That was my favorite hospital. I can go there and eat food all I want. People that really care and they really help you. You're going to live, nigga, if you go to that hospital. They're going to help you. They ain't fucking around. They doing their job. They don't give a fuck. But your ass fucking around and go to Miami, ride a trauma center. It's a wrap. You're going to die. You can get shot in the motherfucking toe. You go to that hospital, your ass is dead. So it's like they have a they have they have a negative rate versus you know more people die going to that hospital than they live. That is the absolute worst hospital. If you ever something ever happened, you get in a car crash or something in that area, and they tell you finna go to Ride a Trauma Center. I forgot the name, but it ends with Ride a Trauma Center. The, when you hear that name in Miami, say, oh, nah, nah, just say no. Don't go there. If you go there, your ass going to die, man. Them people there, it's like they kill us. And in the hospital, you're not going to, you know what I'm saying? It's like racist pockets all over the United States of America. And so at that time in Broward, racism struck, in my opinion. It just so happened that the time my little cousin got hit by the train, she was on somebody racist, uh, a racist uh, shift. Somebody racist was in charge and they felt like, fuck this nigga, you feel me? Man, go ahead and kill that nigga. Pull the plug, say she died or whatever. Her neck was broke, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Because I picked her up, man. Her neck looked fine to me. I'm looking right at my little cousin. She just had her eyes closed. She wasn't even sleeping enough. Okay, you know, like, I don't know if y'all ever been in a fight. But if you ever knock somebody out, you hit them, you knock them out. Some people snore. Some people make like a sleeping sound. You know, some people make a moaning sound sometimes. Uh, none of that. She was just sleeping. Like, her eyes was closed, but she was still saying, huh. It's like she was just needed some rest real quick. You feel me? Like, nowadays, sometimes some people go into a coma, right? If you black, they trick your family to pull a plug on your ass quick so you can die forever. When you got some of these white people that have been sleeping, you hear the stories, oh, this person just woke up out of a coma for three years. What? Motherfucker, you been in the hospital for three years sleeping? 
And that's the key. Your body just need rest. I don't give a fuck how long you been in a coma for. Five years, nigga. As long as it take. long as you come up out this bitch. But they trick you and say, oh, you, you need to pull a plug. How the fuck I need to pull a plug inside the richest, powerful country in the world? You the richest country in the world. You got all the technology in the world. But you encouraging me to pull a plug on my loved one in just a week, motherfucker? I mean, are you the rich, richest country or not? But you got stories about some of these white people. They literally woke up in 10 years of five, you know, Four years, three years out of a coma. You feel me? And so it just, it just that, you know, in my opinion, my little cousin ran into a, a racist crew that night inside the hospital and they struck. It struck like they always strike. You feel me? And my little cousin just happened to be the victim. And so she died because when I picked up, when I got there, I'm going to tell you when I got there, I ain't see none of my cousins, none of my little cousins, but one. My oldest cousin standing up fucking screaming and crying. Like a little, I don't know, man. She was just fucking crying. I'm like, cuz, what the fuck? I ain't even know she was my cousin at first because I got my dog walking with me to school. You feel me? And we walking to school. I ain't talking about a homie. I mean, uh, my dog, literally. My dog would used to walk me to school and she was smart enough to go back home once I get near school. And she'll go back home. When I get out, get out of school, she'd be right there waiting on me. She just walked me to school. I had a train like that at a young age. And so um, she walking with me to school and we get to that field. And I see this lady standing there screaming and crying, talking about her baby, her baby. What fucking baby lady? And the train was stopped. I'm like, what the fuck? So I caught on like, oh, shit. This lady, baby mother got hit by the train or something. You feel me? So I went into looking mode. I went to looking. I can't, I ain't see nobody. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm looking. Then I noticed that's my cousin. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, cuz, what the fuck? What happened, cuz? What's going on? She ain't say shit. She's steady fucking crying. My baby, my baby. I'm like, man, what the fuck, cuz? Like, what the? She's steady crying. So I'm like, fuck it. And that's my oldest cousin, you know what I'm saying? She dead. Now, her name T.C., she just died not too long ago. Her real name was Gloria Hopkins. She's standing there fucking crying. I'm asking her, what the fuck is going on? She fucking crying and crying and crying. She ain't saying shit. So I go under the train and start looking. I'm like, what the fuck? So I ain't see nothing. And then my, I heard my dog licking something. Like, he was, she was eating something, swallowing something. I get on the other side of the tracks, and I see my little cousin laying on the ground. And my first reaction, I just kicked the fuck out of my dog. And she was just trying to wake my little cousin up. I just didn't know no better. No, I just kicked the fuck out of her. Boom. She, she made a little sound. And with the hauling ass running down the track. Screaming and shit. I kicked her right in her stomach. Hard as fuck. And she ran off. I ain't never see her no more. But I picked my little cousin up off the ground. I, my heart was numb. I don't know. I... I ain't cried nothing at first. I was like, what the fuck? I just picked her up off the ground. And, um... I seen her blood look the purple. She had a, a gash in her head, like a split. It looked like her head was cracked open. It was split, and she was bleeding. I was like, Jackie, she kept saying, huh? I said, cuz, you all right? She said, huh? I said, what happened? She said, huh? But she was just talking. She was just laying there, like, sleeping. And she ain't even look, like, besides the blood dripping out her head and all on, on, on my arm and shit, she was just saying, huh, that's it. Like, she got knocked out. She just needed some rest. That's it. When the police came telling me to put the guns down and all that shit, I put it down. Next thing you know, you know what I'm saying? When I ran all the way home crying like a little bitch, uh, my mama and them go down there. After I told my mama and them what happened. They started running down there. Then I seen my mama and them on the news and shit. And my grandma was on the tracks with a teddy bear with my little cousin holding her and shit. I'm like, damn. And so um, we started getting attention, but that shit was crazy. You feel me? But that's it. Yeah, it was a, it was a moment. Then when she died, it hunted me because they made me put her down. Only thing in my mind kept saying, man, I could have saved my fucking cousin. If they would have never made me put her down, I could have, even if, even if it was nobody at that house, or the apartments where I was walking into, I, at least I could have brought her home because it took them a long ass time for the paramedics to come at least an hour it went nowhere here that shit would have took me an hour to get my cousin to my apartments at the time we just lived only two three blocks from where it happened 
You know what I'm saying? I could have walked down there with her with, with, with that. And she was talking. She was saying, huh, to me. Man, that shit was crazy. But anyway, that's my story. That's my time. Catch you in the next video. I hope that answers. 7.30, no, 7 o'clock at night tonight. We're going to try to go live. We're going to see what that's going, what it's going to be like, what we're going to talk about or whatever. So until then, catch y'all in the next video. Y'all stay safe and peace out.